On today's video, we will travel between the capital of France, Paris, and the beautiful city of Nice on the French Riviera, on board my favorite train ever, Le Train Bleu or the Blue Train, one of the most iconic French trains. You will see why it's like to travel on board SNCF Intercité de Nuit service, with some breathtaking view along the Mediterranean coastline in the morning and some unique shots of my cab ride experience. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the beautiful ride. Welcome to Paris Austerlitz station, one of the seven large Paris rail termini. This first station was built by the railway company of the Paris Orléans in 1840, but was demolished and rebuilt in 1867. And this is the one you can still see today. Austerlitz was a major station for all the trains going southwest France. Since the opening of the LGV Atlantic in 1989, Austerlitz lost most of the traffic. And now only a few TER and Intercité service and all of the Intercité de Nuit service remain. The station has been at the heart of a massive refurbishment project to double its capacity and unclog Paris Montparnasse and Paris Gare de Lyon from their TGV traffic. Both stations are at full capacity, so the future of Austerlitz is quite bright. Folks, the train bleu is such a special train for me. It's the whole reason why I love trains so much. This is the train I took the most while growing up. I estimate my ride on this train were around 300 times in my whole life. During my childhood, my dad would take me and my brother to see and visit our grandparents in Saint Raphael at each school holidays. I have thousands of memories with my brother on this train. This is definitely why I fell in love with Night Train. It's in my DNA, and I was only two weeks old when I took this train in July of 1996. But what makes this train bleu so special, and why is it called a train bleu? This train started as the Calais Méditerranée Express in 1986. The train quickly became a symbol of luxury due to the high quality of service on board provided by the Compagnie Internationale des Wagons Lits. After World War I, the train was equipped with some brand new metallic equipment. The sleeping cars were painted in blue with a gold train. Back in the days, André Noblemer wanted his car to evoke the color of its military uniform from the Chasseur Alpin, the elite mountain infantry force for the French army. This color on the coach eventually led to the nickname Blue Train, Train Bleu, in 1923. The nickname only became the official name of the train in 1947. After World War II, a lengthy decline started for the train bleu. The train was limited to Paris in the 60s, lost its bar service in 1968, and was still a sleeping car only train until the dawn of the 1980s. The TGV introduction in 1981 accelerated the decline of the train bleu. Simple cushioned cars were added to the consist, and the service took its biggest hit in 2007 when SNCF decided to remove the sleeping car from the train bleu. In 2017, the train was eventually discontinued along most of the Intercité de Nuit services in France that year due to unprofitable and poor ridership. But I was taking this train until they stopped operating and most of the trains were full. These were just killed from the inside by the SNCF and the French government. But due to an unexpected surge in demand for night train in the post-Covid era, the train was eventually relaunched in May of 2021 with some rebuilt cushioned car, but I will get to that in a second. I just can't believe we're in 2023 and I haven't taken this train since 2017. When the train was reintroduced in 2021, I was living in the US and since I returned to France, the train has always been sold out when I was planning to visit my dear grandma. So I mostly used the TGV to go down there. But here I am in September of 2023, finally taking the train bleu. The train bleu leaves Paris every day at 2008 to arrive in Nice the next day at 9.25. The train schedules change quite regularly due to some track work. The train has one seated carriage, four second class couchette car, one second class couchette service car with bag storage and a snack corner, and one first class couchette carriage. The train bleu is coupled with another intercité de nuit, the Paris to Briançon service in the Alps. The train would be uncoupled and split later during the night in Valence. For this ride, I will be riding first class, and one of the major inconveniences while riding with SNCF Intercité de Nuit service is the lack of privacy. Even though you're booking a first class ticket, you will still have to share your compartment with three strangers. SNCF should urgently bring back sleeping cars that are more suitable for first class services. If you want to attract new customers in 2023 on night train, privacy is key. And I will let you watch my video on the new night jet to learn more about the subject. The compartment is equipped with four couchettes, but unlike all my other experience in a four couchette compartment, this one feels very roomy. You will find loads of room for luggage and a control panel above the entrance door to control the temperature in a compartment and as well the volume as the announcement. You know, the classic stuff. Luckily, the person I was supposed to travel bailed out at the last minute, and so did the two other strangers that were supposed to travel with us tonight. 
and since the train won't stop until tomorrow morning, I will be alone for the night. The couchette is very large and long. I'm 187 centimeters. I didn't feel cramped at all as I can feel in other compartment. Also the classic stuff, a water bottle and an amenity kit with a sleeping max, earplugs, solid toothpaste and tissues. It's pretty much basic but useful for a good night on board. And finally, since the refurbishment, SNCF finally, finally, finally included a power outlet for each couchette. It was missing from the whole couchette fleet before refurbishment and this was the biggest complaint made by passengers. With the revival of many night train routes, SNCF have to refurbish 80 couchettes. These were from the famous Corail family built in the late 70s. That's the second time this coach was refurbished after the Lunia refurbishment in the early 2000s. But this one is definitely the biggest refurbishment ever made since the 70s. And SNCF recently made a slight modification to the refurbished Corail by painting the roof in white. During the day, the train is tall without any power under the harsh Mediterranean sun. And once the train is welcoming passengers, this train can be a true haven. But with a new white roof, they are saving between 5 and 6 degrees Celsius, which is quite impressive for just paint. Our train will be hauled by a BB22000 series called Nekase or Broken Nose. It's one of the main workers for SNCF. It was built by Alstom in the late 70s, and its bicurrent engine are capable of a top speed of 160 km per hour. We left Paris Starlitz right on time at 2051. Our ride will take more than 12 hours for a total of 1100 km. 12 hours is quite long compared to the TGV, which is around 5 hours and 45 minutes on average. But far more enjoyable since 80% of the time spent on board is spent sleeping, right? No need to waste a whole day traveling, that's the magic of my train. Unfortunately, our train was stuck for more than one hour due to a broken switch near Atismos. Unfortunately, the legacy French national network suffers a lot from its lack of funding. And this kind of incident is unfortunately way too frequent. And spoiler alert, more problems are coming our way. Anyway, let's hope the train catches on a delay during the night. This train have a lot of buffer time in case of an unexpected delay during the night. I went to sleep around 23.30 and immediately fell asleep. The night was outstanding. The Corail always had an amazing comfort with excellent soundproofing thanks to the Y32 bogies. I slept for a solid 7 hours and woke up right before 7 o'clock near Avignon. According to our schedule, we should be already past Marseille. So something must have happened overnight. After a quick chat with the conductor, it appeared that our train was diverted overnight due to a landslide on the main line between Valence and Avignon. It's a shame since the engineer had gained some minutes overnight and we've lost again. And now we're back 70 minutes behind schedule. Well, at least I have some time to review the breakfast and onboard service before showing you something very, very special. And unlike most sleeping trains in Europe, when traveling with Intercité de Nuit, you would get nothing. If you want a coffee, you have to get to the service car and in a tiny compartment, you will find a couchette car attendant with a coffee machine that can sell you a sort of breakfast for €6.20 with a coffee, a brioche and an apple juice. And I don't even understand how this is not included in your first class ticket. When you see the price of a first class ticket, this is unacceptable. Bruh. And if you're hungry during the evening, you can pre-order some food on Intercity website and pick it up from the same tiny compartment the night before. But come on SNCF, this is France. We are the country of good food, come on. You can do way better. Anyhow, for this ride, I had a special authorization from SNCF to go inside the cabin of the engine. So I left my compartment in Marseille Blancard, which is the first commercial stop of our train today. I chose this section of the line since I wanted to see the change of current right after Marseille. Here, our train will switch from 1500V DC to 25000V AC. The electrification on the Côte d'Azur line is more recent than the rest of the Paris-Lyon-Marseille line. Marseille Ventimiglia was electrified in the 60s and Paris-Lyon-Marseille was electrified in the 50s. I boarded back the train one hour later in Les Arcs Draguignan. And since the most scenic part of our journey is soon, I will do my walkthrough right now. This is the cheapest accommodation, the second class. 
This is the cheapest accommodation you can find with the intercity de nuit. Prices start at 19 euros for a seat. The seats are similar to the one we could see on some intercity service in the West. And to be fair folks, it's quite surprising to see a 2 plus 1 layer for a second class, but I guess that's better than 2 plus 2, right? And do you have any idea why SNCF chose this layout? Also, would you spend a night here for 19 euro? 12 hour here? Let me know in the comment below. Welcome to the second class service car, where you'll find some space for your bike. You do have to reserve a spot while booking though. Here the compartments are narrower than first class, with 6 couchettes per compartment, which is way too much in my opinion. Just imagine, you and your luggage, 5 luggage, trying to squeeze everything over there with 6 other people with 5 other luggage. And now comes the toilet time. And then since you have completely refurbished the toilet, it was clean, fully functional and finally up to today's standard. Good job there. And this is a station I would normally get off, San Rafael Valescure. And oh boy, it feels weird to not get off here while on board the train bleu. But to give you a better insight of this journey, I decided to push your journey toward Nice and show you the true beauty of the French Riviera from the train. Unfortunately again, due to a failed signal, our train will remain stuck in San Rafael for another 20 minutes. We are passing by the small station of boulogne sur mer and this is where my grandparents are living. I still sometimes go there to spot some train, and occasionally when I wake up early in the morning to get some fresh baguette, I spot the train bleu. After Boulouris, we are finally making our way toward the massive de l'Estorel and their famous red rock that goes into the blue Mediterranean Sea. Just after Boulouris, on the right hand side, you will find La Plage du Débarquement, which is a beach where the Allies landed in August 44 to save Europe. Thank you, American. We owe you something. High speed train, maybe? This is clearly not the best day to enjoy the crossing of the restaurant, but it's still quite enjoyable. Especially when you can open one of the windows. They are not supposed to open, but you can always find some that are. If you're doing it, be very careful. This is one of the highlights of the journey, the beautiful Anteor Bridge, or Viaduc d'Anteor. It was built in 1863, this bridge is a true monument here in the Restoral. Last summer I even went and chased the train bleu on its way to Paris with my drone. After roughly 25 minutes, we are arriving in what I call the ugly Côte d'Azur. Full of concrete, welcome to Cannes. And after Cannes, Nice is finally on site as we travel along the Baie des Anges. We arrive in Nice with a total delay of 97 minutes, which is way too much, and it's only 2 hours before the first TGV from Paris. Overall, I'm still glad that SNCF reintroduced the train bleu. To me, it's still the most beautiful night train ride you can take in France. It's a useful service if you don't want to waste a whole day traveling. The refurbishment of the couchette is definitely an improvement. As I said, this couchette is into finally meeting modern standard. However, Intercity de Nuit still lacks a lot of onboard service such as breakfast, common area or just private compartment. 
Of course, you can book a whole compartment for yourself, but it will be really, really expensive. All right, folks, that was my first trip report where I'm talking. Uh, I'm trying something different out there, so please be patient. Uh, there will be some, a few series of videos where I will talk and I will decide from here if video are more successful that I will continue to do that or I will continue to, with the subtitles style. Please let me know in the comment section if you like this style of video, what can I improve? Uh, of course, I'm sorry you have to bear with my French accent, but that won't go away anytime soon. To be honest, folks, I was starting my editing of the Tremble video and I was like, you know what? I That's a train I just love way too much and I can just do a basic video. I have to do something new. You know, it's been five years. So I hope you liked it. Of course, be sure to subscribe, like the video if you liked it. If you didn't like it, just, just move it. <laughs> and uh, be sure to subscribe on social media we are back on tiktok too and see you on the next one have a good day